about the, about the presidential election. We're going to talk about then the local election. We're going to talk about ballot measures and whatever. We're going to bring you up to date, sort of educate you about, uh, about what's going on around us, okay? But remember, you've got to register to vote. I don't want you out there yelling and this, that, and the other about this thing after the fact. The fact of the matter is you've got to register to vote. you got one vote, just like anyone and everyone else. And you can vote for anybody. That's right. In the, in the general election, anybody in the primary, you know, you had this, 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 but you can vote for anybody. So listen to what's going on. And when these people start knocking on your doors and this, that, and the other, ask them those questions. We're going to educate you. Okay? Okay, fine. With that, Ron, let's just get on. Let's go. Just a few little quickie things that I want to talk. Again, I made mention about the fact you were you founded the Willamette Week. What was your rationale about that, please? Why'd you do that? Well, uh, back then we had two newspapers in Portland, the Oregonian and the Journal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we didn't think they were doing a very good job. And uh, uh, the Journal, of course, merged into the Oregonian in 84, and uh, uh, now you've got the Oregonian and the Tribune and uh, the Mercury and Willamette Week. Uh, uh, and uh, it just isn't the kind of coverage that we uh, could expect uh, from the days of the 70s and 80s yes, and 90s yes, here in Portland, yes. uh, and the Oregonian circulation has gone like that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, their editorial page uh, has less influence, and nobody's really covering the local news uh, mm -hmm. like they used to. I mean, it's in a little bit and it's out the TV news isn't getting the job done uh, the uh, the commentators on radio are oh. useful but oh. uh, yes, but, uh, but uh, I, I mean nobody's really uh, uh, to get some of the news you got to turn on KBU <laughs> <laughs> I mean you do that's right uh, so OPB's getting into it a little yep, bit I know that yep 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 but uh uh, there's still a pretty big vacuum there yes. in helping people to understand what's really going on. Well, the buck the buck has stopped here at OVD. That's, that's why, right. Yeah, that's why Oregon voters. OVD. <laughs> here we are, folks. Now you, you got it right from the man. You got the man. If he knows anything about journalism, there it is, right there. Ron, again, thanks very much, buddy. Keep going. Well, uh, I thought we ought to kick it off talking about the presidential race. I think that would be a good one. Uh, so, well, what do you think about that piece? Well, uh, I've been watching it carefully, and it's okay. been fascinating to me. Uh, uh, the the uh, Nate Silver uh, Politics 538 on the on the internet, and and he has what's called the Nowcast, mm -hmm. and so every day he updates with polls from around the country on the mostly on the key elect electoral states, mm -hmm. uh, Florida, North Carolina. Uh, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, Nevada, uh, New Mexico, states that are swing states. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so he's got all the latest polls and he combines them. And he also, they follow what's going on on the internet uh, carefully. And his nowcast changes every day. Every day. Every day the latest polls come in and he updates the nowcast. So... You know, you saw Hillary get a big bounce after the Democratic convention. Mm -hmm. Well, she needed that because Trump got a big bounce coming out of the Republican convention. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then after the Democratic convention, it got real close. Mm -hmm. Then we had the debate and uh, Hillary uh, took off after the debate and got about a four point spread. Uh, which is enough to win the election. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some uh, minority campaign uh, candidates in this election. The this is the first election we've had where the unfavorable ratings of the two candidates hmm. are the highest uh, in history uh, for the two candidates combined. I mean, they're uh, they're. Trump has got an unfavorable rating with about 60% of the population, and Hillary's actually a little bit over 50% mm -hmm. who don't really trust her. Mm -hmm. And so the the minor candidates uh, in the race are going to get more votes than they usually do. 
Uh, so Gary Johnson and uh, Jules Stein are, uh, particularly Johnson, I think. Uh, Libertarian Party, right? Libertarian, Libertarian Party. party. The Green Party. Right? And the Green Party, uh, respectively. They're going to get uh, more votes than they, than they normally would, and they're going to have play in effect. So this race will be won with less than 50% of the votes. But you've got to win a state to get electoral votes. That's right. And so the minor party candidates are going to have a hard time winning states. Now, there's some states that uh, Johnson has a chance in, uh, but uh, Stein is not going to get any electoral votes in this election. That's pretty clear. Um, and so uh, you need 270 electoral votes to win. And uh, uh, if, if Trump can carry Florida, he'd have had a chance. Uh, uh, in this race, uh, because that's like the sixth biggest, uh, fifth or sixth biggest electoral, uh, electoral votes mm -hmm. uh, in population in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, this latest thing with the uh, uh, remarks that he made about women, uh, it's it's taken him down again in the mm -hmm. polls. And you look at the now cast from Nate Silver, and you know it was okay, I guess, to be against. Uh, Mexicans and and uh, against Muslims and blacks, uh, and blacks. And Bruce. Yeah, yeah, he could huh? he could he could mess around with David Duke uh, yeah, 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 and yeah. Uh, still be okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when he comes after half the population, uh, women, it 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 knocks him down a little mm -hmm. bit more. Mm -hmm. And so you got some Republicans, national Republicans beginning to walk away from him. McCain mm -hmm. has now said he's not voting for him, mm -hmm. and, and several are asking him to get out of the race. And so I, I think, I know the debates tonight. Yeah, and, debates tonight. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be a very interesting piece. Yeah. I've got to bring you back in on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's one. fascinating. You, you remember, it, we, we needed to talk about Oregon. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Hillary is going to carry Oregon. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, in the primary, uh, I think Gary Johnson's going to do a little bit better here than he's going to do uh, in other states nationally because uh, the uh, there are not too many Trump fans here in Oregon. He, he was going to have a fundraiser here and he had to cancel mm -hmm. it because he wasn't going to get the, the big shots in the Republican Party uh, to come out for him. And I know Greg Walden is still supporting him, but... Uh, but you know, a lot of the Republicans have 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 said they're not endorsing. But him. don't you think, though, a lot of folks who are may, say, may, maybe making the point about, well, I'm not voting for him publicly, but we'll vote. Oh, for him. there's a whole, a whole bunch huge, of huge uh, pop population yeah. out there that is yeah. that is. Uh, uh, but are they going to turn out and vote? Because a lot of those folks don't vote regularly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're they may not be registered. Yep. Yep. And so that's what I like about Nate Silver is, you know, he's he's on top of what's really happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it appears uh, that uh, a lot of the people who uh, are quiet Trump supporters mm -hmm. are are not uh, uh, registered to You're vote registered and, to and, vote. and yeah. are not going to be out there voting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just said it a few minutes ago. Yeah. It's uh, it's about voting. Yeah. That's what our yeah. democracy is about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, me, I, I, I like Aristotle. Aristotle says that it's about perfecting the community. And, he, and uh, there's a great book called The Trial of Socrates by I.F. Stone. And in it, uh, uh, I.F. Stone says, well, Socrates was about perfecting the soul of the individual. Mm -hmm. But Aristotle was about perfecting the city and the soul of the city and, and bringing about justice and bringing about uh, 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 the right mm -hmm. for uh, the, the democracy to work in the city okay. in a way that, that uh, served as many people in the community as possible. So anyway. Uh, okay, that's, that's uh, the president. That's the president. Let's okay, come good. into Oregon and talk about uh, the, the fantastic ballot measure fight that's going on here. Biggie, number 97. You got anything, yeah. anything to say about that one? I do. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I'm concerned about Portland's business community. Okay. Uh, and, you know, in, 
uh, from 1950 to 1980, uh, the gross domestic product of the United States and of Oregon doubled. And it took the middle class along with it. Uh, so the middle class, from 50 to 80, the middle class rose. And uh, we, we had a lot of people who uh, had jobs, you were there, oh, yeah. who worked hard, uh, and their incomes went up along with the wealthy. And, and we had people yeah. uh, who were able to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Mm -hmm. They started companies, they worked hard, and uh, that... Um, uh, from 1980 to 2010, the GDP doubled again, mm -hmm. but the middle class didn't grow, and we didn't get people out of poverty mm -hmm. uh, into the middle class, and mm -hmm. we didn't get people from the middle class yeah, into the wealthy. I'm sorry. The, the, so so uh, the reason for that, I think, in part, was the businessmen we had in the period from 1950 to 1980, if you, you remember some of them, there were men like uh, John Gray yes. and Monfred Orloff and Neil Kelly mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, Lou Perry and uh, even Glenn Jackson, Don Frisbee, Bill mm -hmm. Wessinger. Mm -hmm. They wanted a tide that lifted all ships, Bruce, and that is uh, missing in our business community today, in my mind. Uh, so we're here having this uh, uh, big election uh, because the, uh, the revenues for our health care and for our education system uh, have not kept pace with the needs in this mm -hmm. state. And we don't have a sales tax, one of the few states that doesn't have a sales tax. And our income tax has uh, gotten too high in a lot of people's minds. I mean, people move here from other states to take a job. I used to work at Nike for 13 years, and mm -hmm. there were people moving into Oregon, taking a job, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they uh, were upset because of the amount of money that was taken out of their income tax if they came here from the operations in Memphis or elsewhere in the country. <laughs> they, they, they said, whoa, mm -hmm. that's a big cut of my uh, income here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've had this uh, unbalanced situation since we, um, in, in 1990, we, we passed ballot measure five and we put a limit on property taxes and the education system has really, um, I mean, look, you and I are here because we got a good education. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I went to Tillamook High School and the University of Oregon, uh, and um, th th there was the opportunity uh, to uh, uh, lift yourself up by your own bootstraps and make things happen in this, uh, in this uh, uh, state. And, and uh, I graduated from the University of Oregon with no debt. And the average person getting out today <laughs> is, I mean, it's 20, 30, 30 yeah, grand yeah, yeah. and uh, that they are carrying in debt. And so uh, the, my point is um, that, that Ballot Measure 97 would uh, fund the education, health care, and social services of the state at a level that I believe in. And the business community... Seventy percent of our economy is based on the consumer uh, economy, on what the four million people who live in Oregon buy here. Mm -hmm. So that's seventy percent of our economy. Mm -hmm. The other thirty percent is business to business kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but the consumer economy is what drives the state, and that's true across the country. Right. And the the big corporations are the ones that are. Um, the big players in our mm -hmm. consumer economy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I don't care whether you're talking about, you know, Comcast or Walmart or Apple or Kroger or Safeway, uh, McDonald's, um, I, I mean, uh, AT&T, Verizon. 
I mean, these big corporations are, uh, they're the real players in our, uh, in Oregon's consumer economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what uh, Ben Unger, who was in the state legislature, did is he conceived of, let's tax those big guys and keep the money in the state. Mm -hmm. And so $2.5 billion a year from, because 82% of the people who would be paying this tax mm -hmm. are, uh, their business is from out of state. Anyway, yeah. Uh, and it's only being paid by people, by, it isn't being paid by small businesses. Mm -hmm. It's only paid by corporations that are making more than 25 million a year. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that hits some local people. <laughs> you know, it hits the utilities which are owned here, Northwest Natural Gas, for example. It hits uh, the uh, Powell's, it hits. Uh, uh, Umqua Dairy, it hits uh, Tillamook uh, uh, Dairy, it hits, uh, th there are some farms that it hits, uh, and, and that are making more than $25 million in revenues a year. Uh, and they're local, Les Schwab is yeah, another. Right, yeah. and, and so th they, they're uh, going to pass it along as if it were a sales tax. Mm -hmm. They've got to in order to survive right, because yeah. they're they're not making that much yeah, money. Yeah. Um, right at borderline. But uh, uh, the impact of keeping $2.5 billion a year in the state and spending it on education, health care, and social services in Oregon mm -hmm. is, uh, I think, it overcomes the... the uh, that's going to lift the whole economy okay, okay. and lift all ships. And that overcomes the, uh, the problems that these local businesses of size are, are going to face in yeah, right, my mind. Right, right, so right. So okay. that, that's where right. I'm coming from on ballot measure 97. Right. The early polls showed 60% of the population favoring ballot measure 97. Mm -hmm. But today, um, we don't know what's happening because uh, there's going to be over $20 million spent yeah. <laughs> on advertising. Yes. I, I got a mailer in the mail and uh, 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 opposed and, uh, uh, you know, all this TV advertising that's yep. uh, coming yep. on opposed. And uh, so we, I can't tell. I think it's incredibly important how it's going to come out, but I can't tell how it's going to come out, we don't know, because that advertising is having some effect. Yeah, it's yeah, got to yeah. have some effect. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the Oregonian and the Tribune have been hammering on uh, uh, opposing ballot measure 97. And uh, I'm disappointed that there aren't more business people who want to lift all ships here and that they haven't gone to the legislature and said, let's solve this problem we have of funding education, mm -hmm. of funding health care, mm -hmm. of funding uh, so social services for those who need it. Um, they haven't done that. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the the public employee unions and Ben Unger, uh, hey, credit to Ben Unger, right? Yep. Uh, yep. I mean, yep. he, he caused the fight to happen. Yep. So even if it, it's not successful, I think uh, th there will be a positive result that will come out of it in the legislature. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, okay. uh, enough about Bob 97. 97. 97. Let, let's end a couple of races that I that I think one of which you you've um, you've endorsed, if you will. But let's go to the governor first. You got you got Bud Pierce, an outsider, mm -hmm. and you got Kate Brown. And and I think Pierce has sounded a reasonable and and uh, logical. I mean, I think he's a he's. A, uh, got promise, uh, but this is the first time he's ever ran yeah, for anything, right, right. And, and that makes it yeah, tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we got a democratic state here. It's yeah. uh, particularly uh, the the liberal Portlanders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, in the Portland metropolitan area, we've got over half the population of the state. Well, over half the population. You think he's identifying with issues like he should be? I don't think he's got it done, uh, and I don't think he's raised enough money to do it. Well, I mean, Chris Dudley came this oh, yeah, close yeah, yeah, to beating yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, Kitzhaber, and yeah. he had a real race, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and he had things to say, and yeah. he had things to talk about, yeah. and uh, I don't think uh, you can come from nowhere. Yeah. In the I mean, Dudley had a name already well, from his name. basketball. He had the Blazers, yeah, you know, he had yeah, the Blazers. Uh, uh, and... <laughs> And I don't think 
Bud can pull it off. Okay. And that's not saying that Kate Brown has has overwhelmed anybody oh, no, no, with her performance. Oh, yes. uh, I like Kate. I yes. think she's a good person. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think she can do a good job for Oregon, but... Uh, she she, uh, she hasn't overwhelmed uh, anybody yet with her performance. So we'll see what happens after she gets elected. Yeah. I think the test is yet to come for exactly. her. Okay. Let's uh, go. Let's go. Let's move on to uh, how about Secretary of State? Now that's a good. That's a heck of a race. That is well, a, really, heck, of a, a race. heck of a race. There you got you got Dennis Richardson who recently ran for governor, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's in the race, and and uh, he looked like he's getting some media support pretty great there. And, but then you've got Brad, you know, he's a... Brad Abakian is... He's a, a toughie. Uh, uh, he, he's uh, uh, been the labor commissioner, yeah, right. and so he's run statewide. Yeah. He's run for... Uh, served in the state senate um, and uh, has run uh, for other offices he's here. He's a Democrat. He's a Democrat. He's, he's, you would think he would have the... The lead Wait. here, but Dennis Richardson yeah. just ran for governor, right? Right, and yeah, he's yeah, getting yeah. endorsed uh, yes. in a lot of places. Oregonian, and, he, he, he's and, and so Brad's uh, difficulty in my mind is that he's kind of overreached on some things. Mm -hmm. You know, he's gone out there and staked out positions which um, are uh, liberal yeah. and. Uh, and really, uh, they're not part of the Secretary of State's right. job. Right, has been one of the, yeah. A and, uh, uh, and Dennis Richardson has made the point that <coughs> uh, I'm, I'm just going to focus on the job of the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Richardson is one of the most knowledgeable people about state government. Oh, yeah, and he's been in there. He's been, the, there. He's been in there he's for, been a, been long there for a long time. Yeah. So it's yeah. a very interesting race. It's very close. You know, as a as a longtime Democrat, I'm going to vote for Abakian, mm -hmm. uh, and I think he's a smart man. Uh, and he, uh, but it, uh, this is a tough race for be him. A tough, be a tough and race. I think Richardson could very well uh, upset him in that race. I really mm -hmm. do. Even though he's a, a Republican running in yeah. uh, in uh, <clears throat> liberal uh, in liberal more, Portland. Yeah. Um, it's, so it's it's very close and very close. deserves watching. I don't okay. know how it's going to come out. Okay. It's kind of like ballot measure ninety seven. I can't okay. really predict. Right. Uh, right. The state that, treasurer that's race. That's kind of interesting. You kind of you get kind of a little thing. I, mean, I got you. I got you right here in the Tribune here. You're, <laughs> you're going to be going Republican on this piece. What, what's the deal? Well, uh, we have a, a Republican candidate who is very uh, well qualified, and his name is Jeff Goodman. And uh, uh, Jeff uh, was the uh, treasurer for Heister, and he also has been the treasurer for several subsidiaries of Northwest Natural Gas. And he's currently the treasurer <coughs> for the Legacy uh, Emanuel Foundation. Yeah. He's very sharp. We interviewed him here. Yeah. Uh, he's and sharp guy. he's got the financial background. Mm -hmm. Uh, to manage the state treasurer's office, and you know, Ted Wheeler said we've got some problems here. We're spent. We're sending every nickel of the uh, sixty-eight billion dollar uh, PERS fund through Wall Street, mm -hmm. right directly through Wall Street, and we ought to. We can save ourselves a billion dollars in fees. And you know, look, they're they're. Uh, you you take the last two years, complete years. Uh, that would be 2014 and, and 2015. We had uh, less than 2% in one year and less than 3% in the other year. And the market has been going up during mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not a very good return mm -hmm. on that por no, portfolio, no. that huge portfolio. And that's caused problems for us because uh, we're now... Uh, we're short on funds for PERS, and we're going to have to do something. Well, unlike, uh, in all due respect, un unlike... Um, uh, what's the gentleman's name we're talking about running for treasurer? Uh, Tobias Reed. Tobias Reed. I, I like that Reed. Ted really didn't, that, that wasn't his forte. You know, now he's going to be mayor now of the city of Portland. Well, and, and he, 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 he tried to get the legislature yeah. to uh, let him, yeah, but, he, but, uh, but he wasn't successful no, at that. He, he didn't and uh, he, didn't, he couldn't get the support no. for it in the state legislature. Well, I think that if you've got somebody who is that's uh, his background. That's, that's his background. That's Significantly, that's totally. I think he's going to be able to get both Republicans and Democrats yes. uh, to come uh, come along on on reshaping mm -hmm. the way we're spending that PERS funds mm -hmm. and uh, and and managing it yeah. differently than yeah. it's being managed yeah. today, which is yeah. not all that successful. Yeah. So. Um, 
I think the credibility that's there because of his background will mm-hmm. help him do that. And he has said to me, I'm in favor of that. Mm-hmm. And he's also said something else, which for Democrats is important in this race. He said, I'm not interested in being governor. I'm interested in being treasurer. I'm yes. never going to yes. run for governor. Exactly. He said that and, here, too. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I think when, when Democrats look at Dennis Richardson, they're going to say, uh, gosh, uh, Dennis is uh, uh, somebody that I worry about running for governor mm-hmm. uh, because of his social views. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But... Goodman, I mean, he's not running for Secretary no, of State that's no. in line if the governor right. uh, walks in front of a bus. Right, right, uh, right, right. Uh, so, uh, you, you know, he's, uh, he's somebody that uh, uh, is not uh, simply out to yes, accomplish yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, uh, I have yeah. a lot of experience with Tobias Reed, and he's been the majority uh, leader in the House of Representatives. Uh, some people uh, point out that he that he has worked in the uh, uh, for the uh, Secretary of the Treasury in the U.S. as a mm-hmm. policy advisor, and uh, that he has uh, graduated from Willamette, and that yeah. he, he's that many people believe he's a, a nimble and smart man. I watched him on the Columbia River crossing. He, I probably attended uh, over six years, uh, twelve uh, of those uh, hearings uh, down in. Uh, Salem, of the legislator on the Columbia River crossing, mm-hmm. he was a co-chair of those yep. Uh, yep. Uh, committees. Very articulate, uh, and he uh, he could uh, uh, he, he never asked a question about the CRC, and mm-hmm. and you and I both know they spent yes. over two hundred million. million. That's right, uh, and That's then right. and then it didn't go anywhere uh, for very good reasons. Uh, the was killing nine hundred and thirty five permanent jobs uh, it was going to cost over three billion dollars to build this yep, high bridge exactly. they'd have to move all the uh, jobs in the Columbia Business uh, Park on the other side of this new bridge because they the big parts that they're making couldn't go underneath the bridge right, on a boat right. uh, I mean it was a real problematic uh, uh, situation and he wasn't there you know he just uh, Performed the job of being a cheerleader for mm-hmm. Kotech and Kitzhaber right. on the CRC instead of digging in and asking the tough questions and being a critical right. thinker. And so uh, that's why I'm supporting Goodman. Is I think okay. he he'll get the job done. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Well, look, look like we've run out of time here, but we've got there were a couple other areas that I wanted to just talk with real briefly. Can you give me about maybe three minutes? Three minutes on them real quick. Sure. Okay. How about twenty six one eighty four. Well, get the, the big man, Multnomah County politics. Yeah, limiting get the five hundred bucks. Yeah, uh, limiting the contributions in these campaigns, and this was a, you know, Bernie Sanders carried the primary here in Oregon, uh, and one of his real issues was let's uh, let's uh, do something about uh, uh, the big money in politics and the dark money in politics, and so what I like about this measure uh, that the Multnomah County Charter Commission put on the ballot mm-hmm. uh, is that it. It limits contributions at 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. Well, this will test the Oregon, uh, the constitutionality okay. of uh, Oregon's uh, 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 situation because mm-hmm. they're saying, well, free speech, money's like speech. And the same way at the U.S. level, it could even go up to the U.S. level mm-hmm. and test the constitutionality there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, w- many other states have limits. Oregon does not have any place with the limits. Mm-hmm. Multnomah County is a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Deborah Kafori, uh, who I supported, she, she raised uh, $446,000 in, in the in the uh, uh, last race for chairman of Multnomah County. Well, that's a lot of big money, and I think the, the uh, yeah. Portland Business Alliance and the, and the big corporations uh, uh, have too much influence yeah, uh, with they that do. big money, yeah. and so at, I think I'm looking at the Wapato thing right now. I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's a major issue. Yeah, yeah. same thing. Uh, uh, and then, and finally, uh, I'm deeply concerned about the uh, ballot measure 26 179. Affordable housing bond. Yeah, it's going to give uh, over 200 million bucks uh, 
uh, to spend on affordable housing. Yes. And we got to get people off the street here. Yes, yes, uh, yes. In uh, my neighborhood, uh, out on uh, Northeast 70th, it, we got a 18 tents lining yes. along uh, just across the street from uh, uh, our apartment hey. uh, complex. And uh, so. Is that going to solve the problem? Uh, uh, it's going to help. Uh, it's probably, uh, I like what Homer Williams has proposed, uh, which is to let's build a big shelter and let's do like San Antonio does, which is get the people who want to have a permanent job and a permanent place to live off the street and give them the opportunity to do that uh, and also have a place where people can go and get a shelter. Okay. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, well, just on a, just a little side note, I mean, I tell you, if we had we gotten this uh, uh, this Mayor Broussard on the job, you know, we would have solved, would have solved this problem a long time ago. We would have taken him down to Wapato, process him, and find out who in the hell is on the damn street. Yeah. But guess what, poor Bruce, you know, this guy, we, we've missed him. You know, I don't know, we have to wait around. Or I don't know what's going Maybe on. Maybe he'll run again. You think so? I hope so. I know. <laughs> Ron, it's been a pleasure. Thank you okay, very well, much. Will you for come the back time. with us and kind of we'll, we'll maybe just do a little update? Maybe after that. Um, uh, after the election, you want to talk again? Let's do that, please. Okay? All right. For sure. Okay. Thanks just a lot. Okay, good. There's Ron, folks. There he is. Here's the guy right there. He gave us the update. We'll, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels, on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Okay, hey, we're back, folks. Voting time. Remember now, you got to go out there and register to vote. You got to register to vote. Otherwise, I don't want to hear from you after the fact, okay? You got to get out there, but you got to listen to the issues, facts checks. And the only way you can get real fact checks is right here on the Oregon Voters Digest. And we're going to be doing it ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. Well, okay, here we go. We got Here's our second segment right here. We got a third party candidate here running for for president of these United States, Gary Johnson, and the representative for Oregon. There he is, the one and only Scott. There he is. Thank oh, you, Scott. Bruce. You mm -hmm. Thank you, good sir, for having he, me on. He's been working so hard, he mm -hmm. needs a shave. <laughs> oh, I've been working. I just came, I just came God, from... God, the rain, he looks soaked up. Whatever. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I okay. just came from Hood River. <laughs> okay, and we were, great. At, we, actually, we were at the, this morning, the marathon yes. that was yes. run. Marathon. We had people there with what sign waving, and this today yeah. we've been giving out signs right and left. I forgot. You were 300 pounds with you. Now, Look at you. Yeah, I'm now 170 pounds, pounds sopping wet. Pounds, boy. <laughs> Gary Johnson does it for you. Take the pill. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right, buddy. Good. We got we got Scott here, and then we got Secretary of Libertarian, Libertarian Party. Hello, Bruce. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Well, Richard is a is, that's my great name. time okay. of the year. And then there's Teresa. He's right. Without without Teresa, he wouldn't exist. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Welcome, Teresa. 
Yeah. Okay, Thank she's you, been man. on the show too. They've all been Thank on the show you, as veterans. Yeah, we're all veterans. And you don't know No, Vinny. I'm actually a veteran. You're a veteran. Okay. Yeah, but, you guys are military uh, veterans. <laughs> <laughs> well, if any, anybody knows uh, the issues, trust me, I've got this group is here. And not only are they locally or statewide too, but a lot of times we tend to focus on that. Scott, why don't we just give you a little quickie and give us a real quickie about Gary Johnson. Okay, where is he at right now? You heard some comments. Gary from, Johnson, from, we are we are the quick. only campaign that has actually seen momentum. Trump and Clinton are trying to hang on. We have our numbers have doubled in key states. Our numbers have doubled in the last four or five weeks in um, New Mexico. We see a rapid increase taking place in Utah, in Colorado. Um, so we are actually gaining momentum, mm -hmm. and that's okay. very unusual this time of the election cycle. Usually this time, as you're moving forward to the, the November 8th you know, voting day, that you see a decline in third parties in the interest. And what you see in the national polls, mm -hmm. which don't include, for example, key demographics for us, would mm -hmm. be um, millennials would be veterans. Um, you're seeing in, our, in our, these key demographics, Latinos, that we are actually increasing. But for example, the CNN poll that was CNN Orc poll did not include 18 to 40 year olds in their polling to determine whether or not we would be on the debate stage. So I think the big surprise is that if you want to believe your own spin, which is what m mainstream media is doing or what Trump and Clinton are doing, if they believe their own spin, they're in for a little bit of a surprise because our numbers are actually growing. And they're looking at polls which exclude important aspects of who we are and then they pat themselves on the back feel the whistle a little bit more as they're passing the graveyard but they let them whistle while they pass through the graveyard our numbers are doubling mm -hmm. what, what do you think about electoral electoral college electoral votes? i think we what absolutely you think you get that, that i absolutely believe that we will 20, win 30, I believe, 50 100 votes i, I believe think? that we will win um possibly um, three states three states i think we have a good chance of utah colorado and new mexico what are the numbers in as far as, as, far as those states can electoral well, I, uh, well, you have to have 270 to win. Right, but I mean, but how, many, how many of those you know, our, our, our whole strategy has been to deny Trump and Clinton the right. electoral win. So if we win New Mexico, if we win Utah or Colorado, we we set ourselves and up. And it's close. Yeah, very okay, close. Then, well, well, Gary's from New York, right? I mean, no, New, New Mexico. York. New Mexico. Right. Right. Well, the, way, the way there. it would work is if Gary Johnson won just enough states to deny an electoral college majority to both Trump and Clinton, the election would be thrown to the House of Representatives, okay. where each state would get one vote. Okay, now one vote. One vote. So the representatives. The representatives. Now uh, the the thinking is that Democrats, knowing they don't have enough votes to elect Hillary Clinton, would not stand for Trump, and that Republicans, even though they have a majority, there are a lot of them that don't want Trump. So Gary Johnson would be the compromise, and according to the Constitution they would have to vote for one of the three top vote getters. So they wouldn't be able to bring in a new person. They would have to choose Trump, Hillary, or Johnson. Johnson. So hmm. if it got thrown into the House of Representatives, Johnson would be very well positioned to come out the winner. And when really? you see the endorsement of Johnson by the Chicago Tribune, when you see our numbers, he had an amazing, his vision of, na of you know, foreign policy. Um, he's really articulating his vision uh, for America. And it's interesting, your former guest was talking about kind of that pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You know, I think Johnson represents kind of that, that rugged individualism, but it's not the hard, it's, it has a softer edge to it. So it's still that individualism, the idea of make your own way, your entrepreneurial activities. But Johnson has a he has a very key understanding that he's not going to be dictator in chief, that he will work with Congress. So you're not going to see programs magically disappearing. Mm -hmm. But any program, anything that will cause us to have lower taxes, that will cause us to unleash the um, the econ the American economy, that will pull our troops out of Afghanistan, out of Syria, things of those nature, of that nature, all those things you're going to see that these are all key issues for Johnson. But, you know, in all due respect, there are two major issues here in this in this country that many Americans are very, very concerned with, and that's the whole issue of undocumented workers, that's key, mm -hmm. and then the whole issue with African American and i.e. the Muslim piece, because in all due respect, they, um, they, they identify uh, African Americans as all Muslims too. So we got well, this problem, you know, if you will, this divide, if you will, as opposed to the assimilation. The assimilation Governor very, Johnson has been very, very outspoken about Black Lives Matter. He understands that the black community has received, um, they don't, that community does not receive impartial treatment, that okay. the odds of a black person being arrested, a lo uh, the odds of a black person having um, difficult inter interaction with the police is far higher for a person of color than, a per than someone such as right. myself. And with regard to the national security issue, 
Governor Johnson, while he has not supported the military incursions we've been a part of, he is a supporter of the vets and does believe we need to do right yeah, by our vets, which, which so. we do. And, and, and we that, don't I think today. that message needs to get out more. That's all. Yeah. I mean, he, it's out there. It's well it, known. Your, as a, your previous as guest was talking two. about the, the, the poor state of Oregon media. He was lamenting how we don't get the local stories. Like we try, we I mean, we couldn't even get a local story about our booth at the state fair into the Oregonian or mm. into the Pamplin Media Group, mm -hmm. into their local newspapers. There's a lot that doesn't get in. I, I think print media is, it's been dying for a long well, time. Tough, you know, the old and goal. there's nothing tough. really filling the the void. Okay. You know, in, in many elections, you know, the name of the game is the old golden rule. He who has the gold rule. That's right. Yeah, he who has the if gold rule. And you don't have the money to buy it stuff. Which uh, is what we're looking at. We're, I mean, we're, we're that's why we say this. this. Our yeah. best all right, American all right. yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that you guys have been doing all the talking, I mean, the person who really, when it gets down to really the, the decision maker, knowing where we're going and what's going on in these campaigns, that's Teresa. That's why we, you know, has got to shut up too. <laughs> Teresa, what do you think? I mean, you, you've, been, you've been hearing us talk. All right. What's the deal? What's, so, what's, the, what's the verdict? Uh, the, the thing that I see happening, I think everybody knows, and I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. I hear it around a little bit. It's the real loser in this political situation at the moment is the American people. Wow. So the American people, yeah. they've let themselves down. All right? We are in a situation where we have a candidate on the one hand who's coming out with things that are on camera that he said in public that basically have the potential to disenfranchise more than 50% of the population. Hmm. Do you see, I don't feel really, really good about somebody who says that. Okay, it's hard for me to get behind. Is it the that. latest incident? You're That's referring to Donald incident. Trump and his footage yeah. showing okay. him. On the other hand, we have a, a candidate who has a lot of momentum going, just as the other candidate does, um, who has major problems with her sense of how to follow the law. For one thing. And that's Hillary Clinton. That's Hillary Clinton. The rules don't... There's a cavalier attitude. The rules so, don't... Yeah, her latest email... This let, let, let is yeah, a yeah. terrible position for the American people to have put themselves in. Not found themselves in. To have put themselves in. One of the worst the things that I can think that can happen they selected them. is a reality show television host is now someone who's being seriously considered, okay? It's not to say that he doesn't have some, some great value. It's not to say that Hillary Clinton doesn't have some great value. But I think that um, the American public will lose so much more than they have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if, if the situation continues mm -hmm. to its, its logical outcome. Is there a way out? I mean, basically, these guys basically been talking about the way out. There yeah. is, but um, but the hurdles that the Libertarian Party has to has to surmount mm -hmm. are huge. Well, we and don't have the part, we, this, this It is through. part of what's wrong with the system because the third parties have been marginalized mm -hmm. for year after year after year. Gary Johnson was not able to get into the debate, and that was a tragedy. And that would have been good. That would have been fantastic. That could have cracked it open. That would, have cracked it that would offer mm -hmm. the citizens of this country an alternative, a viable alternative. Now, we're arguing right here, yeah. and I'm right on yeah. board. Yeah. We have that alternative. Yeah. Yeah. That alternative yeah. still exists. Yeah. And yeah. part of what I hear you but, saying is that it's that lesser of two evils that we keep voting that way. So now suddenly, this is, these are the candidates at the bottom mm -hmm. of the barrel. And now we, so America, we've let ourselves down because we keep voting the, le the lesser of two evils, and we're left with these two deplorable candidates. So well, let's, let's be upfront and honest about this again, too. We need to talk about issues, and that's what the public needs. That's what she's. That's what I hear her saying. We're letting them down because they've got some real issues out there. Well, it's also the but media, man. but media tends to drive the issues as far as getting them out, and that's one of the major problems. So if Gary was part of the debates, yeah. then and indirectly, the issues would be discussed more and fairly. That's I think. Right. I also that's think right. that. Thanks, Trace. In, in in I think she's absolutely right. Right. But. Uh, an element that a lot of people don't talk about is the fact that civics education in our schools and critical thinking skills in our schools have eroded to almost nothing. And I think that the reason why people vote the way they do more than anything else is because they're not engaged, they don't know how to question, they're not familiar with the issues. The average American spends about five minutes a week 
thinking about politics, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you live it. We live it. We live and breathe this stuff. But most of the people out there do not. What do they do? They watch The Apprentice. Yeah. What do they do? Sure. They get on Facebook and create their own echo chambers. Yeah. They're not getting good information from the media anymore because there isn't much media anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And the the information that they're... Fox, but, you know, that's pretty well. So, it's, so, it's, so it's paid media. Yeah. 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 Or it's ratings driven. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people don't have the tools through, you know, civics education or critical thinking education to, to dissect it. Mm -hmm. And that is only going to lead to bad decisions, whether you're in business or politics or because any of that sort of thing. you can't talk about the issues with any substance. You have to, it narrows down to a 10 second soundbite or a 30 second soundbite. Now, how do you communicate complex ideas or, you know, very um, consuming situations and issues? And not, and not to mention that in both the case of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, what they have done, I believe, has been done by many, many leaders in the past who we regard and yeah. build statues to, mm -hmm. but they never got busted mm -hmm. because not everything was videotaped and there were no emails with packet sniffers that you could find stuff mm -hmm. out on. Mm -hmm. If there had been email in, you know, 1925, what would we have discovered, you know, leading up to the Depression? If there had been videotape, you know, with, uh, Pigs, you Kennedy. know, Jack Kennedy or yeah. Ted Kennedy or those guys, what would we have found then? It's so so you've got people who have uh, um, eroded critical thinking skills. They're not well educated in civics and they're flooded with information well, that the erodes of the image of. Well, of you know, these people, you know, and I'm going to take which, exception to a certain degree with that, because I'm saying, you know, today we have this little mechanism. Yeah. Yes. That's but right. when you, you can, can spend Google and, you know, you can deal your facts and all due respect, what's reminded of that. I think about this latest volley, if you will, of this whole issue with the yeah. Trump thing. Well, actually, Bruce, so the well, issue, well, though, let me, is that let me make Clinton's the point, because I want to ask you. Okay. No, but I understand. But my point mm -hmm. is that I guess the point I'm making is this. Uh, the media is all this one sided issue about Trump and what he he did. But what about the other side? I kind of, I did well, my Well, that's being check. drowned out. The WikiLeaks no, concerning did, Clinton. No, but I did the fact check on this piece about the Clinton piece. Mm -hmm. And if ever, anybody can remember, remember uh, Prime Minister Arafat? Remember mm -hmm. back in those days? You remember when yes, he sir. visited yes, the, yes, remember he visited the White House with Bill Clinton and, 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 and all this and all deal? That. No, the deal with about the cigar yeah. and Monica Lewinsky and mm -hmm. and I hate to put it this way, but the bottom line, they, they're putting this this kind of stuff on on the tube today. Yep. But my point is that, you know, what he did to this young lady, and and did to Minister Arafat, giving him this cigar that has been placed in an area that she, that, you know what I mean. It's, it's really a sad note, and gave it to him and had him smoke it right there in the White House. Mm -hmm. That's on this. Well, the now, problem the thing, with the point, this... the point I'm making, no, the point I'm making is, is this, you know, but we've got a media that we're that the Americans are looking at. They should be either giving it both sides, or if not that, they shouldn't even gotten in that arena at all. Yeah. In any of that Did arena. Did you know that That's Google... Right. Stay with the issues. That's Google right. got busted. Right. Uh, yesterday it came out that they had been ta tampering with the search result algorithms yep. to ma to minimize negative website search hits mm -hmm. for Democrats yep. and to elevate yep. negative hits yep. on yep. Republicans. Yep. Yep. So we that, have that's this information that, that's available to yeah. us. Mm -hmm. But the problem is is that you can spend $18 million, $18 million. Clinton just spent an obscene amount of money specifically targeting Gary Johnson to kind of distort his his stands on issues, and targeting the millennial demographics. So yeah. yes, you can turn to your phone that's and you can backfire. find on the website. But at the same token, the, the, they all carry the same script. So you, you don't want Gawker, I think well, Gawker actually just went out of business. But you can have Rare or you can have Red State, you can have all these different webzines and bloggers, etc. But somebody funnels out a script and all of a sudden it's the same same storyline all across every single one of them because the, these are this is media, this is information as a commodity that's being bought and sold based on ratings, bought and sold based on what what group you're trying to reach. And so you can distort truthfulness. Mm -hmm. And we've always lamented, yes, the bias of the media and we can we can uh, we can laud and herald the coming of the internet, which gives us all these different points of opinion. But unless you have the means by which to actually sort through it all, and that comes back to civics, that gets back to you with your why are 
we at this situation? Yeah, the statement that she made has the power. Mm-hmm. Well, the American people has actually, left Actually, but it's, no, you That's, don't, because you gerrymander the dis- the voting districts to polarize people, so now all of a sudden you became you become more partisan. You and I lose our vote because we're not hardcore left-wing or we're not hardcore right-wing, but our voting districts have all been gerrymandered to prevent the, the middle voice from actually getting a position in the legislature or in the representation of our democracy. And so now when I cast my vote, I'm cast in a, in a district which pulls my centrist vote away from the candidate that I might want to choose and pulls it to a hard right or a hard left because that's when you get back to what Gingrich did back in the 90s. Okay. This is all okay. hyper gerrymandering mm-hmm. that diminishes the power of our vote. Change. We need some change. I mean, that, Absolutely. Was quite, that was quite Here's a bit. the change. No, <laughs> Here, I mean, that makes sense what I'm yep. saying. Well, and I mean, this I, is the I, change I, right here. I'm not joking. I'm not simply saying this because rah, rah, Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson's not a theory to me. I lived in New Mexico when he was governor. I had to had I started my businesses under his while he was governor. My children went to schools that he created. Um, you know his policies created. My children are at university right now, being funded by scholarships that the policies that he implemented. Um, his social safety net in New Mexico it was called Salud Presbyterian Salud or you know by the way Presbyterian Hospital is the largest employer of New Mexico. He brought in um, different hospitals to provide competition to provide alternative uh, offerings to our medical health care needs. So Johnson is not simply theory for me. He's actually mm-hmm. experience. But, they, but again, they can, they can Google this too, right? Gary John, Gary Johnson Well And his issues, right? If, they, if they know what to Google. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. JohnsonWell.com. If they know what to Google. It's in any large system, and it's, it's not always true, but it's almost always true. In any large system, fundamental change never comes from within. It comes from outside. Right. Take a look at our American cars today. Ford, uh, you know, Chevrolet, they're making much better cars than they did in the 1970s and 1980s. Why? Because the Japanese came in and yes. really threatened their market. So they had to up their game, right? If you want to improve the way McDonald's makes a hamburger, you don't go to work for McDonald's. Mm-hmm. You open a Burger King, mm-hmm. exactly. right? And that's, that's what this is. This is an option. This is fundamental change coming from outside. Now, um, this is healthy right. and are, organic versus processed and okay. <laughs> prepackaged. There are insurmountable, <laughs> they're seemingly insurmountable. I don't think they are insurmountable anymore. They're, they are huge encumbrances. But the truth of the matter is, Johnson Weld got on all 50 ballots. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. And if they get more than 5%, if they get more than 5% in this election, that little checkoff box in your tax return that's voluntary, says I donate a dollar to the the tax fund. Right. The FEC will recognize the Libertarian Party as a national major party and our next nominee will be eligible for substantial funds from that voluntary checkoff. One box. more time. Wait wait wait, 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 one more time. Say it one more time. If Gary Johnson gets 5% or 5%, more... 5%, is that, is that the majority vote or the electoral vote? Of the no, national of, vote. Of, of the popular vote. Okay, popular vote. 5% of the popular vote, then... The next libertarian nominee will be eligible for tens of millions of dollars that come from that voluntary checkoff mm-hmm. box. And mm-hmm. you don't have to run around trying mm-hmm. to get ballot access mm-hmm. anymore either. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. You, you will. But it's not yeah, the same. The, the ob- the ob- you can surmount the I, obstacles I, I wanna, because you have I, the funding. I want, I, want, I want Teresa to come in one more time here now. Now that you've heard this, <laughs> this, this, this situation here, what do you think? Well, I was just going to add, um, it just drives the point home, that last point you made. It means everything you think and everything you do mm-hmm. matters mm-hmm. it has impact you are in all due respect i heard what you said there's gerrymandering mm-hmm. you know your vote goes this way or this mm-hmm. way after you after you are out of the ballot box mm-hmm. but that's not really what what matters here what matters is that you have a responsibility to take your power back That's right. and you can this. see at this point i think there isn't a person here that doesn't understand the consequences mm-hmm. of a citizen that is not going to do that mm-hmm. and, you know and when i hear also saying with these two issues that have come out just recently on donald to a certain degree it's a blessing that people are mad so well, the get evangelical mad, community, so get the mad so you know the bottom line get mad the right way you got to vote yeah. Get mad the right way. Go and register to vote. Get mad the right way to make demand that these individuals talk about the issues. Demand that the media talk about the issues Sorry. that mm-hmm. are a uh, major concern to this country and our way of life. 
What I'm really yeah, con- what I'm really yeah. concerned about, what keeps me up at night when I think about this stuff, is that if Trump gets elected, you know, he'll be there four years. If Hillary's elected, she'll be there for four years. But they're gonna make, you know, two, three, maybe even four Supreme Court nominees. Yeah, that's and the that's gonna that's, a major that's gonna impact. And, and, and you know, Gary, of course, if the Electoral College thing happens, then he would make it. But the the point I'm making is that I think that we have to look longer range because the Supreme Court is going to impact this country for decades based on whoever is elected in this next If it's term. based on the issues, fine. If it's based on the issues, but, fine. But right now, it's not going to be based on the issue. Is, well, it's it, also, is this side against this well, side? Well, we know who That's Trump's right. going to nominate. Actually, we know no, who I Johnson's going to nominate. Who's Hillary going to nominate? Because think of Sonia Sotomayor, okay? For example, people were very concerned about her, nomin- her becoming a justice. Mm-hmm. And yet, her last the case that came out not too long ago, she was people were surprising because she sided on the more conservative side mm-hmm. of the issue. Mm-hmm. And so we don't necessarily know. Um, we can say this is what might be appointed. But the reality is you don't know what that justice is going to do once mm-hmm. they've been given the, the status. You don't know. I mean, you, I mean, I think I think that there have been surprising Supreme yeah. Court justices, but that doesn't usually happen. Usually okay. they know if it's a conservative or a True. liberal judge or libertarian. And then we got about Johnson one minute, right, guys? Strict we got about one minute? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Strict okay, constitutionalists. I don't see it here. Yeah. We don't have the, the deal. Okay, keep going. Well, I just want to say, let me know. Gary Johnson is a constitutionalist. Okay, good. Well, good. Look like we're at the end of the day here. But look, at you guys going to be back, right? It's funny. It goes so fast. This is good. But, but the last comment, hey, get out, register to vote. vote. Register to vote. That's demand, a put, hey, put it out there. And at the same time, demand from the media that they deal with the issues. And let's get away from all this other garbage. Demand Stay coverage informed. of what's important Come out, to man. You. See me next time around. Bruce Bouchard here, Oregon Voter Digest. Here's the team. There they are, folks. Thank right you, Bruce. Oregon. Oregon. Take care. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.